The standard way your clients connect to your session hosts is something called Reverse Connect, which creates a TCP outbound connection to your AVD client through the AVD gateway to keep things secure. And this is a great solution, but since you're using TCP, the connection is kind of chatty and also can result in higher latency. Now there is no getting around the laws of physics, but what if we could use a wormhole and just change the equation? RDP short path, on the other hand, uses the UDP protocol on port 3390 and allows you to connect directly to your session hosts. This greatly reduces latency since UDP is a much more efficient protocol for this kind of traffic, but there's more to RDP short path than just turning on UDP. Your user sessions will also use a more efficient connection between your clients and the session host by bypassing all of that unnecessary stuff. Now up until now, RDP short path was only allowed on private connections like over an express route or a VPN. But as of today, all that changes. That is right, my friends. Now you can use RDP short path over the public internet to achieve lower latency to your AVD environments. And I'll show you step-by-step step how you can test it, different options to roll it out at scale and how to secure it. And then of course, how to monitor to know that your users are actually using it. And all of these are time codes, which are chapters here in the YouTube timeline. So you can navigate that way or go down to the description section where I've got chapter links. Now the setup here is ridiculously easy. All you have to do is add one registry key and then you're all ready to start testing. And in the connection bar at the top, when you click that, you can see you're using the UDP protocol and we're getting some crazy low latency. Now, this registry key is great for one VM, but I don't wanna do that to every machine. So how can we scale things up? But one of the easiest ways to get this rolled out to your entire AVD fleet and get them all starting to use RDP short path is using group policy. Now in the group policy manager, open your AVD policy or create a new one if you like. Go to the computer configuration, preferences, Windows settings, and then right click on the registry and select a new registry item. The action should be to create then click the ellipsis next to the key path and go to H key local machine, system, current control set, control, terminal server, win stations. Then click the select button at the bottom. Now your value here should be called ICE control and that's all one word. And the value type is a reg D word and it should have a decimal value of Two. And that's it. The next time your session hosts get a GP update, they'll be ready to use short path over the internet as well. Now, if you're using Azure AD join, then you don't have a domain controller to push out GPOs, but you could be using endpoint manager. And if so, you can run a script like this to add the registry keys, or you can skip all of that and just use a custom script extension or DSC script, puppet, chef, or anything like that to add this as part of your VM provisioning process. That way, every time you build a new VM, the registry keys will already be there. Now, if this is your second or third time watching an Azure Academy video, that's probably the universe telling you that you need to click the thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get more quick solutions like this every week. So now that we have RDP short path working over the internet and you know how to roll it out at scale, let's talk a little bit about how you can secure it. And the good news here for RDP short path, if it does have a problem or it's not configured quite right in your environment, or you don't have the firewall rules set up correctly, then it will just fail back to reverse connect automatically. So your users can still connect and do everything they need to do. Now, if you protect your AVD environment with a firewall or a network security group, you're gonna need to modify those rules to allow for the new UDP traffic and the stun server. Now, STUN is a network protocol, which stands for Simple Traversal of UDP Through Network Address Translation, or NAT for short. This is basically a way of finding the best connection for Azure Virtual Desktop for your clients over RDP short path. And there's a whole long article in the docs here going through how all of it works, and that's all linked in the description section under the video. Now, since we can't always predict where your users are gonna be throughout the world, it's recommended to allow outbound UDP to the internet, but you can limit the range of ports. And that's covered here in the docs as well. You can limit the port ranges on your client and your session host side of things, and all of course for the UDP protocol with the destination of asterisk, which means internet traffic. 
Now you will need another rule for the stun access. This will also be sourced from your virtual network on port 3478 with the UDP protocol to all of these different subnet ranges. Now you can also limit the session port host range and you can do this a different way just by adding another registry key to your session hosts and that'll limit them to just these high ports. You can add that to the same GPO or whatever kind of script you're using already to scale out. And again, the link to this doc and all the resources are under the video. And I already showed you how your users can open the connection and verify that they're using UDP, but you can also check this through log analytics with a very simple query. Just look through the logs for the name called short path established. And on the right, you can see that the UDP type is short path public. That's how we know it's RDP short path over the public network. If it said private, that would be a private connection like your VPN. And the last thing for today is a quick troubleshooting tip. If everything is set up correctly, but it's still not working, you don't see that short path public in your logs, then come back here to the docs and you want to take this long section of code and copy that into PowerShell. You can run this on the session host or also share it out with your users and let them run it from their end since both sides need to find the stun server. And I've just collapsed everything here so that you can see all the code. Just run all of that. And at the bottom here on the terminal side, you can see I've got an error saying that IPv6 is turned off and I did that on purpose on my machine. Now the local endpoint shows the ephemeral port that I was able to connect to and the IP address of the AVD stun server that I was communicating with. And if you can't get any of the stun servers to respond, then you should go back to the docs, make sure that all of the ports are open correctly on the session host side and any client-based firewalls that you're using just to get everything working. Now, if you wanna see how to use traffic shaping and several other ways to improve your AVD traffic, go check out this video right over here. Happy learning.